Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today I'm sharing about the stairs that I painted down into my studio. Now, I decided to go with a few colors on this, and there were some things that I learned along the way that I'm going to share with you in this process. So this started out with a flight of stairs when we bought the house 20 plus years ago that were just completely naked wood, contractor grade. I think these were supposed to have carpeting put over them because it was just a bare bones, barely functional staircase kind of thing. So back then I decided I would faux finish it and I made it look like little fake bricks. And one of the things that I learned doing that is it makes a big difference if you use a floor paint because something you're going to walk on, that's a lot of wear and tear. So I end up having to do touch ups over the years on it that I don't want to have to do again. So this time I got floor paint. So number one, get floor paint if you're going to paint stairs. The second thing is, is I couldn't decide exactly how I wanted to do this. I didn't have that perfect image in my head. I didn't have a clear plan of what I wanted to have happen. So I didn't start. And then I realized this is silly. This is crazy. Just it's paint. I can paint over it. So I decided I wanted a lot of color. So I went to the hardware store and I got 12 different colors of paint because I had 12 stairs on here. And I said, I'll figure it out once I get home with the paint. Because the most important thing to me is starting. Not having the plan, but starting. So my plan to start with was get the paint. Then I had to figure out what to do. And I decided that I wanted all those colors everywhere, so that was going to be a little busy. I also knew that I wanted the stairs easy to see. I'd been to an exhibit at the Modern uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York, and they had all these taped lines all over the stairs, and it was a gorgeous art installation, but it was like trying to walk on an optical illusion. And I don't want my stairs to be like that. I want my stairs to be very clear that you're stepping on a stair and where it's going, since after all, I managed to miss a step a couple years ago and broke an ankle. And I don't want to do that again. So I knew I wanted something easy to see when I'm stepping on. So that meant I thought I was going to go with solid colors. So I decided each rung would be a different color and I started painting. Now the other thing that we did is we decided to put new risers on this so it had that nice little curved edge. So that made it easy. I'm going to paint those risers somewhere else. So when I'm adding the color, I just have to paint the rise, no, the step. The risers. Ah, see this all this hardware stuff. It gets so confusing for me. The the part where you step on the step, we were gonna replace those, so all I had to do was paint the risers. So I went through and did each color of those, and it was great because I could step on the stairs while I was doing this, so I didn't have to worry about painting myself into a corner. Yeah, that's coming a little bit later. And so I did the different colors on there. Now you might be thinking, wow, did she prime that before she did that? That probably would have been a smooth idea, that smart thing to do, but no, nope, didn't. Did regret it because it took a couple extra coats of paint to cover up that faux brickwork, but I was just so impatient to get started, I decided to just dive in and make it. So the consequence of that was I just had to put a couple more layers on. So if you're patient, more power to you. The areas where the boards met up before hadn't really bothered me, but once I got some color on it, those really stood out in a way that I didn't like. So I decided to fill those in with some flexible caulking. So you just fill them in, smooth it out, and then paint right over it. So once I had that layer of color on the stairs and I could see how it was coming together, it was just too tempting. All of those cans of paint, and I had plenty of paint, let me tell you, I just had to find a way to use more of it on here. So I decided to put these scallops on here, and my daughter and I grabbed some paint brushes, we put the paint into little like um, canning jars, little jelly jars, so it was a little bit easier to manage. And then we just started going crazy, putting random brush strokes in these scallops. So now every time I walk up the stairs, I also get the memory of doing that with her, which adds even more to these stairs for me. Once we had the scallops on there, I loved how they looked. I knew that was the thing for the stairs. What I didn't know in that moment though, is I had created a challenge for myself that I was gonna have to deal with when I was stenciling the words on. I knew that I wanted a quote on the stairs, and that was a little bit of an adventure, finding just the right quote. Because one, it had to have the meaning that I wanted for me, the message that I wanted each time I stepped in and out of my art studio. And then it had to be the right length. If it was too short, it would just look weird just having words on a couple of stairs. And if it was too long, it wasn't gonna fit. So I ended up with this Brene Brown quote that really spoke to me. And the more that I walk up and down these stairs with it, the more I know that this was the exact right quote for me. 
Because you see, well, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Now to stencil the words on, what I did is I took a couple of letter stencils, and these are ones that I created for Stencil Girl, and they're called Vintage Typewriter Alphabet Large, and I cut all the letters apart because I was gonna be doing enough stuff on these stairs, I wanted to be able to just position the letters that I wanted where, rather than having to deal with that whole big stencil in one place. So I just cut them apart, and as I'm putting it up there, I decided to go with sort of a wonky look to the letters, and I got the first one done, and it said, let go. I was very happy, and I wanted to see what it looked like. So then I go down to the bottom of the stairs, and I look up, and I realize I have a problem. When I stand at the bottom of the stairs, I can't see the letters on the top because of the angle of the stairs, because there's not a lot of room behind the stairs because you turn immediately when you get down there. So yeah, I gotta rethink my plan because I thought I could, be, I could read the entire quote when I stood at the bottom, but nope, can't do that. So I go up there with a baby wipe, I wipe that black paint off, very pleased with how much of it came off, and I move the letters up. And I did it again, stenciled it all over again. I'm like, okay, now we're good. Go down to the bottom of the stairs and I look up and guess what? Still not good. No, it's just not right. So I go up there and I erase it with the baby wipe again. And then I realize I'm just not gonna use that top step. The top step was the problem. Now I decided to test this out a little bit before I started adding all the paint. And I positioned various letters on the stairs so that I could get an idea, would I be able to read them? So the good news is if I just skip that top step and left it blank and started the quote on the next one, then it would be a lot easier to read from the bottom. This quote really came into play when I was doing the letters. After all, it says, let go of who you think you're supposed to be, embrace who you are. Well, I'm not a line it up perfectly engineered type person. So no matter what I do, things are not gonna be lined up perfectly. So I decided that I'm not gonna line things up and that's why the letters are each a little bit cattywampus, wonky, whatever you want to call it, so that I don't have to worry about lining stuff up. Once everything was all painted, then it was time to put the treads on. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for earlier. They're called the treads. And here's what they look like when they're raw, when they're naked, before there's any paint. Now, all of them were painted ahead of time, and then they were just simply glued on there, glued and nailed. We did both to make sure that they would stay there. And that's what completed the stairs. I thought that was gonna be the end. I thought once we had the treads on there, I was all done with the painting. But nope, that's when little things started to jump out at me and I needed to do some touch up. And this is where I ended up painting myself into a corner because once I started working on the stairs from the top down, I realized, mm -hmm, yep, I'm gonna to have to stay here until everything is completely dry. So keep that in mind as you're painting stairs, you may want to paint every other one so that you can get in and out of where you're going as opposed to doing every one of them all at once. So what is it about this quote that resonates with me so much? Well, it's all about embracing who you actually are. Not worrying about all the shoulds, the musts, all that kind of stuff, that the baggage from growing up and being an adult. And whenever I get my art supplies out, whenever I'm creating, whenever I'm making, that's when I really feel like the true me. So when I leave the art studio, I want to be reminded to bring that feeling with me and stay myself. And when I'm stepping into the art studio, I also like the reminder of knowing that, hey, whatever's going on out there, you can get back in touch with who you really are once you get those art supplies out, once you start making and creating. If you're thinking about painting your stairs or your floor, just a heads up, solid colors that are light show dirt faster than say a pattern or a dark color. So in the middle of the stairs where the colors get a lot lighter, yep, those show the dirt a lot faster. And here's what the stairs look like when they were completely finished. And by the way, I have mad respect for people that can hold cameras very still or have all sorts of fancy equipment, but this is just me holding that camera going up and down the stairs. Thanks so much for joining me here for the Rainbow Stairs adventure. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I've got a new one. And you can find more of what I'm up to over on my website at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.